Hi everybody, this is Ali with Ali So Crafty. In today's video, I am going to show you how to alter a packing cube pattern so that you can make your packing cubes any size you want. From a large packing cube, medium, small, or anything in between. Thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel. If this is the first time, welcome. You and I are going to create beautiful things together. And if this is not your first time, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Now, if at any point of this video, you like what you see, would you please give me a thumbs up? It helps me more than you know. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and get click the bell for the notifications so that you can be notified when I upload the next video. So today I am going to answer a couple of questions that I've gotten from my compressed packing cube uh, video and my clear top packing cube video. And what some viewers want to know is the measurements for a larger packing cube. So today I decided to not only give you the measurement that I usually use for my large packing cubes, but I'm going to give you something better. I'm going to give you the formula that I use to alter my patterns, my packing cube patterns to fit any size I want. So this formula works for the curved edge packing cubes, not the square. But with this formula, you'll be able to pretty much make your packing cubes to fit your needs, your luggage, your storage, whatever it is that you need to use your packing cubes for, you'll be able to make them using this formula. And this formula will also work for the compression packing cubes as well as the clear top packing cube. The formula is very simple. I'm going to walk you through it in just a moment you can download the formula yourself the link is down in the description and as soon as you put your information you'll get an email with a formula and you can print it download it and use it over and over again and of course you can always come back and watch this video as many times as you need to to follow the steps uh, but it is a very simple formula um, it's really basic, basic, uh, but it's always good to have. I even keep it handy because, I mean, I don't make packing cubes every day. So when I decide to make one, you know, it's always good to have your papers as a reference. So go ahead and get the PDF with the formula in the link down below and follow along with me. That way you can see how... I use this formula is super simple, super easy. If you know how to add, subtract, and multiply by two, you can do this, okay? So let's go ahead and go over the formula so that you can make the packing cubes any way you want. So the very first thing that we have to do is that we need to determine what is your completed size for the packing cube that you want. So once you know this is the packing cube, this is where I need my packing cube to fit, you need to know, you need to have that completed size. So for the small small packing cube, we're going to say that it's 10 and 3 quarters inches long by 6 and a quarter inches wide. So we're making a rectangle, right? This is the length and this is the width, okay? So we're going to add three quarters of an inch to each side of this main panels. These, these are going to be our top and bottom main panels. So for the length, we're going to do 10 and three quarters plus three quarters of an inch. That gives us 11 and a half and then six and a quarter plus three quarters. That gives us seven. So our final measurement will be 11 and a half and seven. Okay, so that is going to be the, 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 the sizes that you're going to cut your fabric, 11 and a half by 7. Now, 
you're going to multiply each one of these sides by 2. Because obviously we have two sides, we have two lengths, and we have two widths, right? So 11 and a half by 2 is 23, 7 by 2 is 14. Now that we have that, we're going to then finish the calculation by adding the results of that multiplication. So 23 plus 14 equals 37. Now this is my formula to calculate the perimeter of a rectangle. You can also use the official formula <laughs> that we learned in geometry when we were in school, which is 2 times the length and the width, right? The addition of the length and the width. So you would add your length and your width, 11 and a half plus 7 times 2 equals 37. I just did it this way. So you can do it any way you want, whichever way is easier for you. You're just calculating the perimeter of your rectangle first. Now you need to deduct your curve adjustment. Remember, this is a curve edge packing cube. As you can see, there are curves along the edges. It's not a, you know, sharp edge, it's curve. So for that, we need to do an adjustment, which is four inches because you have four corners on your rectangle. So we're going to subtract that number, four, from the total perimeter. So 37 minus 4 equals 33. So we take the 37 minus the curve adjustment equals 33. Now that we have that, now we can calculate our back zipper panel. And our back zipper panel is simply that section where it's, it, you don't want your zipper to go to end right at the curve. You want your zipper to kind of go around almost the entire packing cube, but you want a piece of fabric in the back if you want to add a handle or something like that, and it's easier when you open the packing cube, etc. So that is the back zipper panel. And to calculate that, you will take the width of your main panel, so in this case will be seven inches, and you're going to deduct two and a half inches from that width. And that two and a half inches is to allow for the seam allowance, right? So when you're sewing, when you're joining the back zipper panel to your zipper panel, it's allowing for that and also for the curve. Okay? So when you take that number seven minus two and a half, it gives you four and a half inches. So your back zipper panel will be four and a half inches long. Now we're going to calculate our zipper panel. And for that, we take the total perimeter, which was 37, right? And we are going to deduct our final back zipper panel measurement. Okay, so we take the 33 minus four and a half, and that gives us 28 and a half inches. Okay, so when you're cutting your fabric, what you're going to do is that you're going to cut two main panels, one for the top and one for the bottom. And that is going to be 11 and a half by seven. And you're going to cut two of those. You're going to cut your zipper panel, which will be what's around your packing cube. And that is going to be 28 and a half by four. Now the four here is how tall you want your packing cube to be. That's the width. That's the distance. That's how tall you want your packing cube to be. And that you can make it as tall or as skinny as you want, depending on what you're fitting inside your packing cube. And then the back zipper panel will be four and a half by 4.75, four and three quarters. And why is it more? It's because you are giving um, room for the zipper tape. Now, I'm assuming that you're using a handbag number five zipper tape, and that zipper tape is usually one and a half inches wide. 
So to add that difference, you know, and give room to the seam allowance and all of that, uh, when you add your zipper to the zipper panel, you will have an extra three quarters of an inch. So that's why your back zipper panel has to be wider. Okay. Now, let's pretend that you are actually making a larger packing cube compared to the one that I have in my uh, videos. So say that you want to make it, the final size for your large packing cube is going to be 13 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter. So the first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to add three quarter inch seam allowance. So that 13 and a quarter plus three quarters is 14 and 12 and a quarter by three plus, <laughs> sorry, three quarters is 13. So your main panel that you're going to cut when you make this packing cube is going to be 14 inches long by 13 inches wide. Now let's calculate the total perimeter. And I use my formula. You can use the regular, the official formula, but I take 14 times two because I have two sides and 13 times two because I have two sides on my rectangle. And so 14 times two is 28, 13 times two is 26, and 28 plus 26 is 54. So if I was just calculating the uh, perimeter for my rectangle, I would stop there. But because I have curved edges, I have to do the adjustment for that. And so, each corner, right, four corners, so I subtract four inches out of my total perimeter. So I do 54 minus four equals 50. Perfect. Now I'm going to determine what my size is going to be for the back zipper panel. And the back zipper panel, I take the measurement for one of my sides so of the width, so in this case is the 13 minus two and a half seam allowance, which is part of the seam allowance when you're sewing your zipper to your zipper back, uh, zipper back, and plus some allowance also for the curves. So that will give me a result of 10 and a half inches long. So my back zipper panel will be 10 and a half inches long. And then I take my perimeter, 50, minus the 10 and a half, and that will give me the 39 and a half, which will be my zipper pin, which is what goes around the packing cube, okay? In the same way, when you're getting ready to cut your fabric, you'll have two main panels, 14 inches long by 13 inches wide, so two of those, a zipper panel, which will be 39 and a half inches long by four inches height, one of those, and the back zipper panel, which will be 10 and a half inches long by four and three quarters inches tall or height. Okay. Now, um, you can make, like I said, this measurement. The, for the height, you can make it as tall as you want. You can do five inches, you can do three and a half. Just practice and play with it, but always give uh, three quarters of an inch uh, room for your zipper. If you're using the handbag zipper uh, that we I recommend you use. Now, to know how long your zipper is, needs to be, I suggest that you cut your zipper a couple of inches longer than your zipper pan. Okay, so in this case, I will probably cut my zipper about 43 inches. That way I know I have a little bit of room to play with the zipper as I'm adding the zipper pull. It's not too close to the edge and I can just have a little bit more room to work with my zipper. 
So this is the formula. You can change this formula and you can use this pretty much on, on any size packing cube you want. If you notice that for some reason, um, when you're sewing it, it's, you know, you always have to, you know, play with the fabric, move it around, move it along the edges, snip, nip, snip, nip, nip the curves to open the curves and all of that. But you can always change this formula too. If you notice that maybe four inches curve adjustment is too much and you want to do three and a half, because it depends on how you sew too. Some people, you know, um, like to sew a little more close to the edge. Some people have moved the fabric and then they have like extra fabric you can trim off. It's up to you. Uh, but you can also, but this gives you a good foundation. This gives you a guidance on how you can make those changes if you want to make those changes to your packing cubes. I hope this tutorial was super beneficial to you. I hope that it works for any of the packing cubes that you want to make. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you and I would love to know if there's anything that I can help you with. And don't forget to check out my next video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.